My name is David Rowley and this is James, my son. James was diagnosed when he was uh, about four years old and that was as a result of um, uh, some genetic testing uh, and that came about as a result of uh, a paediatrician wanting to put together some uh, isolated symptoms that James had. Uh, so that included uh, some scoliosis of the spine uh, and uh, some other bits and pieces. Um, and from that came uh, the diagnosis of Gordon's syndrome, which I think is quite unusual for someone of James's age. Uh, it's often discovered uh, a bit later in life when some of the other symptoms of Gorlin show. Uh, so uh, I, th I think for us initially, it was a little bit of shock and uh, panic uh, as to exactly what this syndrome is and, and what it means. Um, we, as everybody does, went for the search of information online uh, and uh, some of it was very, very good and that included the uh, Gordon Syndrome Group website and some of it, if I'm honest, was, was quite horrific um, and um, not necessarily a good representation of what Gordon is for, for many people. So, and that actually was one of the motivations for me going on to uh, do some work with the Gordon Syndrome Group as a result. Uh, but for James, what it meant was that very early in life we could um, make some of the minor modifications that are really, really important with Gordon Syndrome. So uh, for James, that means plenty of sun cream, uh, which you love putting on, don't you, James? <laughs> um, and uh, it also means uh, lots of uh, long sleeve uh, t-shirts and shirts and generally just being sensible we, we certainly don't uh, hide James away from the world uh, he, um, he, he, he enjoys life as uh, anyone else's age would uh, but we just try to take some sensible precautions and that would also include hats and that sort of thing as well um, so James does have pretty regular uh, hospital appointments and there's some um, surveillance uh, visits for the various um, things uh, that come about as a result of Gordon that James now has. Um, but I think other than that, at the moment, for his age, it's, it's really about uh, surveillance and, and being sensible with James so that we're, we're minimising anything for him in the future. James has had uh, several uh, pieces of surgery, uh, particularly around his eyes, uh, and a, a couple of uh, BCCs removed from his uh, chest. Uh, I think the first time we were we were quite worried, as, as anyone would be with their child having surgery. Uh, but actually, um, there's a really fantastic paediatric team at the uh, uh, Queen's Hospital at Nottingham that look after James, uh, and that's uh, that, that, that's really made it much easier for us. Um, they're not necessarily used to seeing galling in paediatric patients. I don't think there's another paediatric patient, as far as I'm aware, in, in Nottinghamshire. Uh, but they've learnt really, really quickly about it and, and how best to look after James. So uh, that, that's made it quite straightforward. Um, and in terms of the future, I think we're, we're still learning um, about what that, that looks like for James. And uh, I think one of the things I've, I've already learnt with Gordon syndrome is that um, it's very unique to each person uh, and as well as two slightly different mutations of the gene. Um, also each individual presents differently so um, there's a bit of unknown there as to how it develops in James but and it, the key for us in the future is is being as sensible as we can with James whilst also remembering that he's he's a pretty strong-willed uh, young chap and you know needs to live his life as well so I think it's it's about that balance and um, uh, you know helping him to enjoy life and, and keeping him as safe as we can.